Hi, welcome to the Gear Garage. My name is Zach, and this is my little internet show about whitewater stuff. And in this episode, we're going to talk about oar length and seat height and how they're interrelated and things you can do to get better position. And this is important to me. I teach a lot of private classes. And I see people show up with equipment I think is incorrect. And when I change their oar length and size and position, they see drastic improvements in the rowing. So I don't think people get to try out enough equipment because equipment's expensive. There's no demo centers to see what works. And a lot of times people can get a lot better rowing just by fixing their positioning. So first of all, having the right length oar is important. And I've done some research here. and Just like research is a strong word. I've just collected some data and, and done some division. And realized if you measure the distance between your oar locks and multiply that by 1.63, that gives you a pretty good idea of your oar length, what it should be. And I could be wrong, this is just my best guess, but I think it's a, I think it works, I think it works really well. I wouldn't use it on really small boats and really big boats, but anything like 13 to 18 feet, this works really well. And with the right length oar, what you want to do is, is get the oars down sort of parallel to them to each other, where they're all the way kind of next to each other, and the, and the handles should either like almost touch, or touch, or overlap a little bit. And the longer this length is here, the more leverage you have rowing. So it's nice to have this length be long for a lot of reasons, but as it gets longer, it also gets harder to ship your oars correctly. So that's a trade-off for sure. I like a little bit of overlap, but sometimes if I'm doing a lot of shipping, I might pull them out a little bit. But in general, most people maybe have a little bit of a gap there when they're all the way down. When you pull them up into rowing position, there's more of a gap there. Maybe it's the size of a beach ball, typically. It should be about you, the oar handles where you're pushing, should be about where your shoulders are. So you're, you're pushing on the oars like this, up high by your shoulders, like you do a push-up. You're really strong doing a push-up. Your triceps and your pecs are really made to push like this. Pulling where you're stronger, maybe a little bit lower is better, but those are strong muscles, so you can use them incorrectly, where you really want your maximum power to be, you know, where you want the, you know, let me rephrase that. When you're pushing, you want to be most efficiently using those pushing muscles because they're weak. Also, being in like this is good for your shoulders. When you're rowing out like this, you can tweak your shoulder quite a bit. So like, like in kayaking, people are kayaking with their shoulders in tight. It's also good for rowing just to protect your shoulders. So, so again, have it like this when it's slow. That's a good way to know that that's correct. But your actual rowing position looks something like this. Handles up by the shoulders in a push-up. Okay, so this is, this is all pretty straightforward stuff. This isn't rocket science. Where we get into trouble is when people have their frame. So this is the frame, right? So here we have the frame on top of the raft. And then they want to buy a dry box. And they want to sit on their dry box, which is cool. And then on top of that, they have a little mount for their seat. And on top of that, they have a seat. So they end up sitting like 8 to 12 inches above the boat. And this is pretty problematic. Now, I get that you want to do this because you want a dry box and you want a seat. But what we're going to get to is that like, this doesn't work very well. Right? It's going to cause some problems. So you either can just sit right on the dry box. I'm going to suggest just sit right on the dry box, no seat, or make your dry box really low or reconfigure your boat. Now, if you'd rather have the dry box than row well, your call. Right? You, can, you can have the dry box and have mediocre rowing, that's fine too. But if you want to row the best you can and most efficiently and effectively, you're going to want to change its position. And here's why, and I see this a lot. So once you're up this high, if you have the oars up at a little bit of the angle that they should be, the oars are actually down at your stomach, right? And it's really hard to row with your muscles when your, your oars are down at the stomach. You can try it, it doesn't work very well. And so... What people do to fix that end is they, they want to put their oars up higher, but then there's the angle between the oar lock and the oar does something funky. And so what people suggest is get longer oar towers. So instead of a normal oar tower, they decide the dotted line here is the other oar. They decide to go with a longer oar tower to compensate for this, which then makes the oars further apart too. And so the oars end up being out here, like you're doing a, like a wide angle push up right? And they dive down faster to the river. And this just is an ineffective way to row. And so if you're going to do this, if you need to have this tall seat and to compensate for the issues with the oarlocks, you have to have longer out oarlocks. You have to have longer oars. So the oars actually come to your shoulders. The problem is you don't need just a little bit longer oars. You need a lot longer oars. So this distance between, this may be hard to see, but between what you previously would have had an oarlock at 
to your splayed out longer Orlock is typically around five inches. Five inches on two sides is 10 inches times 1.63. You need an oar that's like over one and a half foot longer, which is a lot of oar and it's a lot to manage. So just by having your seat being higher, a lot of people use the oar that they're told to buy for that boat, but they actually need an oar over a foot and a half longer. And so they're trying to move the boat with these tiny oars. So here's what I'm going to suggest. First of all, if you have to have this big box with the seat mount and the seat and sit this high, just accept your oars are going to be long. Just get long oars, deal with it. But I'm going to really urge most of you to not go this route, right? Either get a box, that, first of all, have your box be barely above the frame, and then you don't need a seat on top of that box. You can just sit on top of that box, maybe buy yourself like a thin little uh, Paco pad, or you can buy some foam to sit on. It works great. You don't actually have to have a seat itself. So, so just, just to reiterate this again, to, have, to, to be, have maximum efficiency, you don't want to sit this high. A lot of people think it's for center of gravity, but it's really so you can properly have your oars in the right place. So I see this a lot. I'm going to share a couple of videos with you here now of showing what, what it looks like when you're on the seat and then when you're drop down lower. This is a 13 to 14 foot raft. I forget the exact length, which a nine and a half foot oar is typical. These oars are nine foot four, which is a, usually a good size. The problem here is he's sitting on top of that metal box, which is pretty high above the frame. And on top of that, there's a frame mount. And above that, on top of that is the seat. So he's about a foot above the boat, which isn't a big deal. The problem is to, to handle that, he has those oar towers that are the NRS 12 inch ones that splay really far out. So where on a normal time, and his frame is a little bit wider than his boat, right? It's not right, you can see it's not centered on the tubes. So the distance between his oar tower actually suggests 11 foot oars. And although nine and a half foot is normal for the size of boat, because of the, his setup, he needs to have 11 foot oars to have proper control. Here we switch the setup. We have a narrower frame. So the frame rails are on, basically on top of the tube. So the frame's a tiny bit narrower. Those are the NRS 8 inch oar towers, so they're not as wide. And so the distance between the oar locks is not nearly as big. And we have a slightly longer oars. These are 9 foot 6 oars instead of 9 foot 4. And I just want you to notice, he just to me looks way more comfortable. If I watch the last video versus this one, I see somebody who looks very comfortable and in control. And what, what's key here is if you watch him row, if he's pushing, he's pushing his, his shoulders are in a little bit. That's important for shoulder protection. But he's also pushing up by his shoulders like he would do a push-up right there you can see him pushing very casually he doesn't have to try as hard to maneuver the boat so this to me looks right i mean ideally i'd like to see he's tall he has a long torso so i would ideally have him be sitting a little bit lower but you know you'd have to get a custom frame to do that so being this low is really nice and i can tell you after talking to him after doing this run uh, with two different setups he way preferred this setup like way preferred having the, again, the ore towers in and him sitting a little bit lower, he felt way more comfortable. So that's it for this episode. I know this is a thing people think about a lot, have issues with. I could, you may think I'm wrong here. These are my strong opinions. I firmly believe that we should be sitting lower. And so if you have different opinions, let me know. I'd love to have a conversation. If other solutions, uh, I'd love to know what they are. And as always, please like this, subscribe, share it with your friends, do all the stuff. And uh, yeah, that's it. See you in the next episode. Thanks.